I want to show you how we can create this as a save view and place it on a layout so we can print it out. Now we could just print it out by selecting it and pressing file print, but it's better if we can manage it and place it on a layout and, and do it the correct way. And the advantage of creating it as a save view and putting it on a layout is it will auto update. It will stay up to date as you change it and develop it and then you can reprint it in exactly the same way. So managing the file is also very important. How do we do that? Over on the right hand side is our navigator. This defines our view and we see in terms of stories we're currently drawing on our upper ground floor and our lower ground floor. So we'll have both of these as stories. Of course we'll create a roof. We don't have anything on the roof story at the moment and we have the terrain which is our mesh. Now we don't necessarily need to print this out, but we might choose to represent some of this information on the upper ground floor or the lower ground floor by showing the boundary. So let's copy this boundary, we'll place it down on the lower ground floor just so we can see the extent, and then we can define this onto our page if we want. So how do we create a saved view? And what scale do we want to create that view at? Let's just leave it at 1 to 100 for now, and then we might change that later. So when we go from our project map, which is this first box, to our view map, so the 3D house, to our floor plan, our view map is where we create saved views. So I've already created three folders here called plan, sections, elevations. We can do that just by creating a new folder. So I'll create another one now just called 3Ds. And we can save our views into here. So I'm currently in my lower ground floor. And that's a plan. So I'm going to save it under plan. And I can either come down here and click on this save current view. Or I can right click in the folder, save current view. Now when I save a view, what am I doing? I'm creating a name, and so that name can be based on the ID and the name of the story. Lower ground floor is the story name. Or I can customize that. So I could call it lower ground floor plan if I wanted to. And generally speaking, I don't want to have an ID, so I'm going to change that to none. Now layer combinations are very important. What do I want it to be? There are some built-in layer combinations at the moment. So I could use this one called Plan Architectural. I don't know if that's going to give me the right result, but I'll choose that one for now. For now, we'll keep the scale at 1 to 100. That's what we've been drawing at, so that's the one that it's going to make as defined. Everything else is fairly standard. Most importantly, we changed the pen set. We created our own pen set. So I'm going to leave everything else as it is now and press Create. When I press Create, we see that it didn't change the, the plan. Nothing looks awfully different. So that's good for now. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing with my upper ground floor. So double click so I'm in the view. move over, left click, single click on the view map, right click, save current view, and I'll do the same thing, upper ground floor plan, and I'll leave all the rest of it the same and press create. So now we have two drawings. These are saved views, so I can double click these and it will take me directly to that saved view. We then need to place these onto a layout. So that's the next box along. And we created some of these layouts already. How do we define these? Under our master layouts, the master layouts are the gray ones. When I right click master layout settings, we see that it defines the size of the page. So we could set this up as an A1 drawing or an A3 drawing. I'm going to do this as an A3 drawing this time. I'm going to reduce my margins down to 5 millimeters, and I'll leave it with a name called A3 Landscape, that's sufficient. And then I need to make sure that all of my layouts relate to this master layout. So I can select them all, you might only have one at the moment, right click Layout Settings, 
and make sure they're related to the correct master layout. In this case, it's the A3 landscape. Now, I'll just show you this one, and then you can have a go. So then we can drag and drop. So we're on our ground floor plan. We can drag and drop our upper ground floor plan onto a layout. Position it in the middle. And we can reduce the bounding box or the view window. So it's only showing me what I need to see. And that's it, we've now placed that plan onto the page. We see there's a lot of space around it at 1 to 100. So a question that we maybe could or should be asking is, well, could we save it at 1 to 50? Would it fit on the page at 1 to 50? Let's have a look. So let's create a new saved view, in this case. Save view. Save current view. Let's change this 1 to 1 to 50, and I'll just write the name as 1 to 50 just so I can identify it very easily. And we will drag and drop this one onto the plan as well. I'll move this one to the side for the moment. And we can see that maybe it can fit. It's just fitting inside my blue box. In this case, the blue box is defining the margin or the printable area. But it's so tight, it's so tight that it doesn't give me any room for dimensions or anything like that. So while 1 to 50 is possible, it's probably too tight to be useful. Now there's no size, there's no standard size between 1 to 50 and 1 to 100. Of course what we're talking about is doubling the size of the drawing. There's not like a 1 to 75 or something like that. It doesn't work very well. So we either need to change the size of the paper or be happy with the fact that there's a lot of extra space left over. So in this case, that's going to be sufficient. So we've got this onto our drawing, which means we can now print this out. So there's multiple ways we could do that. So again, file print, we could print directly. We could go file print, we'd need to be able to find an appropriate sized printer. So if we don't have an A3 printer, we've only got A4 printers selected, it's not going to print properly. We could go file save as, and we could choose then to save it as a PDF file. That's another way to do it, but none of these are the best way. The best way to work is to use the final box here, which is called our publisher set. Now our publisher set currently has three drawings in there, but it's a bit hard to understand where they came from. So instead of using the publisher set, I access it through a different way. I use the organizer. So if we click on this box on the left hand side, we can say show organizer. This brings up a box which is a split screen, which means I can have my layout book on the left hand side and my publisher sets on the right hand side. I'm going to delete these and start from scratch to explain this to you. So when we get to our publisher set it will be empty like this. There's only one box that we can click called new publisher set, so we'll click on that one and we'll call it PDF just to remind ourselves what we're trying to do. Into the publishing properties, we now need to decide what are we trying to create. Are we creating a single file, a real folder structure, or flat file structure? We'll use that bottom one. And we have to choose where we're going to save it to. So we have browse, so we can choose somewhere where we're going to save that to. Once we've created that, we can then press OK. open it up and we can drop our files into there that we want to print. Now I've only currently put something on the ground floor plan so I can drag and drop it and then we can and that has created that as a PDF for us. So we can print that out. Now the point is once we've told it to publish that's now a static document. That's not going to update but this Archicad file here will always update. So we can make changes now to our drawing. We can change our title block. So we can add in some text.
anything we put on our master layout will also be reflected on our individual layouts and anything we change in our drawing will automatically update on our layout. So now we have a title in our master title block, we have some text on our floor plan and when I go back to my publisher sets and publish that's going to republish it's going to this is maybe good maybe bad it's going to write over anything in that folder it's not going to ask me are you sure you want to replace it it's just going to replace it so if we wanted to not override the things we've already published we'd need to save it in a different place or move the things that we'd already saved so if I now open this up we see that this is based on the new settings so we have to be a little bit careful about how that works because it will automatically save and that's how we use our publisher so we go from our project map to our view map to our layout book to our publisher sets and again the way that I prefer to access the publisher sets is through didn't mean to do that the way we access our publisher sets is through our organizer show organizer so that way we've got layouts on the left hand side and publisher sets on the right hand side so we can just drag and drop these into place as they are created and ready to publish. That's it. If you want to give that a go, I'll come and help you do those processes. I'll just repeat a little bit of that. Once we've done our drawing, we then want to move through this navigator. So we click on the next one, which is called View Map, and we create a folder if we don't already have one, create a folder, and then we save the current view into that folder. You don't need to be too worried about the settings for now, you can just press create. Then you drag and drop that onto a layout. You drag and drop your save view onto your layout. Once it's on a layout, then you can publish the layouts through Organizer by dragging your layouts into your publisher sets. And if you hadn't created a publisher set, you go up and then press create new publisher sets.